I've got a special problem for you guys today. So this is a problem from the oldest math contest that I found on the internet yet. It was given in Hungary in 1894. And the name of the math contest is, well, I'm not gonna say that because I don't think I could pronounce that. And so maybe before we talk about this problem, I wanna mention that I've sent a bunch of students in the past to the Budapest Semesters in Mathematics. So that's a program for undergraduates in Budapest where they study lots of nice topics in mathematics that aren't often offered at undergraduate um, institutions. So if you guys ever find yourselves in the place where you're interested in such a program, just maybe keep it in mind. Give me a comment if you went to the Budapest Semesters in Mathematics and tell us how it was. And also maybe give a comment if you want to see me do a series of videos where I catch up with some of my old students and talk about what their lives are like now that they have jobs or they're in grad school or something like that. Okay, so now let's maybe look at the problem. We want to suppose that X and Y are integers. And our goal is to show that 17 divides 2x plus 3y if and only if 17 divides 9x plus 5y. And I want to recall the notion of divisibility among the integers. So we say d divides m if there exists an integer n such that m equals d times n. So this notion of divisibility and this notion of being a multiple of a certain number, those are one in the same. So instead of saying that D divides M, we could say that M is a multiple of D. And furthermore, instead of saying 17 divides 9X plus 5Y, we could say 9X plus 5Y is a multiple of 17. So let's maybe do a couple of examples down here just so that we know what's going on. So notice that 2 divides 10 because 10 is a multiple of 2. 10 equals 2 times 5. And then maybe 12 divides 48 because 48 is a multiple of 12. 48 is equal to four times 12. Now you guys can cook up a bunch more examples if you're interested. Okay, so maybe before we look at a solution, I wanna give you guys really the only major hint that we'll need to solve this, and that is something called Bayes' theorem. So there's a super general version of Bayes' theorem that occurs in like commutative algebra, algebraic geometry, but we're gonna look at the kind of basic number theory version. And what we wanna do is fix m and n as integers. And I should say that these really need to be non-zero integers. So you guys can add that if you need to. And then for any a and b, which are integers, this linear combination, m a plus n b, is always a multiple of the GCD and of m and n. So for example, if we take 25 a plus 15 b, this thing is a multiple of five. And that's because five is the GCD of 25 and 15. But if we've got something like this, 7a plus 3b, this is a multiple of one because one is the GCD of seven and three. Okay, so let's maybe clean this up and we'll look at the solution. Okay, so hopefully that hint was helpful. Now we're ready to look at a solution. So what I wanna do is take these two goal objects, so we've got this 2x plus 3y and this 9x plus 5y, and I wanna think about combining them in a way so that I get a multiple of 17. So let's maybe write that down as the idea. So we wanna take a combination of 2x plus 3y and 9x plus 5y to get a multiple of 17. So let's see how that might go. So in other words, we wanna do 2x plus 3y times a plus 9x plus 5y times b equals a multiple of 17. So maybe let's call that 17 now I want to pay attention to what is given to me and that I don't have any control over and what I have control over. So X and Y are given to me, so I don't have any control over those. I can't change those. But A and B are a source of my introduction, which means I can tweak those to make all of this work out. 
So as such, we'll rewrite this in a way that makes it easier to solve for A and B. So I'm gonna combine like terms with the X terms and the Y terms. So let's see what that gives us. So combining the X terms, we will get 2A plus 9B times X plus combining the Y terms, we'll get 3A plus 5B times Y. And remember our goal is for that to be a multiple of 17. So that needs to be like 17 times M. So now there's a bunch of ways that this could go, but before we like really dive into all of the different ways that this can go, we probably wanna see if we can achieve the lowest hanging fruit. And the lowest hanging fruit would be each of these is equal to 17. So notice if each of the, these is equal to 17, then we indeed do have that this is a multiple of 17. In fact, it is 17 X plus Y. Now, a priori, we don't know that it's possible to make each of these equal to 17, but at least thinking in this direction gives us a system of equations that we can maybe solve to see if it is possible. And look, we're solving it over the integers here, so that's important to notice as well. So in other words, we wanna solve the system of equations 2a plus 9b equals 17, and 3a plus 5b equals 17, like that. Okay, so there's a number of ways to do this. We could put this into a matrix, we could use a substitution method, we could do an elimination method. Uh, maybe I'll put it into a matrix. So notice that is equivalent to the following matrix equation. So we have two, nine, three, five times the vector A, B equals the vector 17, 17. And I want to point out that we're going down this road of the best case scenario at this point. Really, all we need is for this to be a multiple of 17 and this to also be a multiple of 17. What we are thinking is that maybe we can make it so that it is the nicest multiple of 17. That is 17 itself. Okay, so now from here what we'll do is multiply both sides by the inverse of this matrix. So that's going to give us A, B equals... So I'm just gonna write it as two, nine, three, five inverse times 17, 17. So let's see what we get when we take the inverse of that matrix. So we're gonna get one over the determinant. So notice the determinant is two times five, which is 10, minus nine times three, which is 27. So we've got 10 minus 27, which is negative 17. So that's pretty nice. And now we can kind of see the motivation for this problem being written in the first place. So there's our determinant. And now we've got to switch the guys that are on the diagonal. So this is gonna become five and two as the diagonal is switched, negate the things off the diagonal. So minus two, minus three. And now we need to multiply that into 17, 17. Okay. So now we can quickly do this calculation. Notice that this one over 17 is gonna cancel this 17 to a one and this 17 to a one by like the scalar multiple rule. And then this minus one here can be brought inside and change all of the signs in the interior of that matrix. And now we can do a little vector matrix multiplication. Maybe I should say matrix vector multiplication. So I take this row negative five, nine and multiply it onto that. And that's gonna give me four right here. And then I've got three minus two, so that's gonna give me a one right here. So now looking at the extreme left and right hand side, we see that we have gained values of A and B. So maybe I'll go ahead and erase this and see what we've got. So on the last board, we kind of took a shot in the dark and we saw that we could take a combination of 2x plus 3y, 9x plus 5y, and make that equal to the nicest multiple of 17 possible. And the nicest multiple of 17, which we argued was actually 17x plus y. And that occurred when a was equal to 4 and b was equal to 1. So let's maybe just go ahead and check that that works, um, just to be sure. So here we have 2x plus 3y times a, which is equal to 4, plus 9x plus 5y times b, which is equal to 1. 
So that's gonna give us two X times four, which is eight X plus nine X. So that's gonna give us 17 X. And then three Y times four, which is 12 Y plus five Y. So that's another 17 X. So in other words, that gives us 17 times the quantity X plus Y. So now we're essentially done. Maybe we could rewrite this equation a couple of different ways, but I don't know that it's super necessary. So let's maybe rewrite it this way, 2x plus 3y times four. I write the four out front. That's equal to 17x plus y minus 9x plus 5y. Or likewise, we could write 9x plus 5y equals 17x plus y minus 4 times 2x plus 3y. Great. And now each of these can be used for one direction of this if and only if statement. So let's maybe look at this one. We can suppose that 9x plus 5y is a multiple of 17 but that means this entire right-hand side is a multiple of 17. But if this entire right-hand side is a multiple of 17, then the left-hand side is a multiple of 17. So in other words, 17 divides four times 2x plus 3y, but then given the fact that 17 and four are relatively prime, it easily follows that 17 divides two X plus three Y as needed. So that would be maybe the reverse direction going this way. Now the forward direction, you would do essentially the same thing. So you would suppose that two X plus three Y is a multiple of 17 but that means that this entire right-hand side is a multiple of 17, but that means this left-hand side is a multiple of 17, but immediately we get 17 divides 9x plus 5y, which is this other direction that we still needed to show. So that's a good place to stop.